Hello everyone. For my On The Case project, I've selected Adidas. In this presentation, I'll be going through how Adidas started as one of the smallest shoe companies to become one of the largest sports brands across the world. I've selected Adidas because of my love and passion for sports, also because I want to better educate myself on one of my favorite sports brands. So first, I'm going to be talking about how Adidas began. So they were first registered on August 18, 1949 by Adolf Dassler, and this started because of a feud with his older brother Rudolf, who had originally established Puma and now is one of Adidas' biggest rivals. And also, the, both of the headquarters are established in the same city in Germany. So I have a very cool picture that shows the Adidas headquarters that are located in Germany. So this is what their headquarters look like. It's a very nice building that they have there in Germany. But anyway, back to the talk, topic about um, their background. So they started as a small shoe company in the 40s, and they only sold shoes. And, you know, over the course of many years, they have expanded globally. And now they're selling varieties of toiletries, sports equipment to pro athletes and teams. They're selling sports equipment. They're selling apparel, new footwear, and a bunch of sportswear for those athletes out there. So now I'm going to be diving into Adidas's mission statement. And their mission statement states, to be the best sports company in the world, best means we design, build, and sell the best sports and fitness products in the world with the best service and experience. Best is what our consumers, athletes, teams, partners, and media will say about us. Once people are saying we're the best, market share, leadership, and profitability will follow. After researching Adidas, I have found a few things that have give them the edge over other big competitors such as Nike, Puma, or Under Armour. Starting off with that, they are customer focused. They are always willing and continuously looking to improve the products to match and exceed the customer's expectations. Also, since they are a global organization, they, they need to be socially and environmentally responsible, and that is why they embrace creativity and diversity. And also, one of the biggest things is that they are dedicated to constantly deliver outstanding financial results. Now I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite topics in Adidas. So at the beginning, I said, you know, they started as a small shoe company and they started working the sports equipment, apparel, footwear, and sportswear. Well, they've gone even bigger. To the point where they are now owning two of the biggest brands in sports. The first one being TaylorMade, which manufactures golf clubs and golf equipment. So TaylorMade is one of the biggest brands in golf and is used by pro athletes like Tiger Woods and Sergio Garcia. They also now own CCM, which is the one of the biggest company brands, sorry, in uh, hockey. Since me being a hockey player, I have used this um, brand, and I without a doubt think it's one of the best brands in sports. the The way they make their equipment and the way they make their their stick is incredible, and they are so diverse from starting as a small shoe company to now owning many other brands. I have a very interesting graph here that shows um, what companies Adidas own. So starting off here in the middle, you can see Reebok. Reebok is a very popular company. They are popular in the sportswear industry, you know, in hockey as well. It used to be a big company, but um, Adidas owns them now. Also, you can see I talked about CCM right here. Um, they're obviously big in hockey as well. And moving over to the TaylorMade. So this is this is where um, they they did this a few years ago and. This is one of the best moves they could have made in sports because now it's the best players in golf are using their brand. And that's a great move by Adidas. And it, just by looking at this chart here, they are very diverse in picking out their companies. So now I'm going to be jumping into Adidas's business operations. So starting off with Herbert Heiner. He was Adidas CEO for over 15 years. And in 2015, he retired and handed his position over to Casper Rorstead. Now this was a big change for Adidas. Usually when companies change their highest part of office, it's usually, it doesn't flow so well, things aren't the same. But with Adidas, things were went perfectly fine. Casper Rorschach continued the success that Adidas previously had when Herbert Heiner was in office. So anyway, now we're talking about their manufacturing facilities. So Adidas has facilities in 63 countries and they have around 53,000 employees across the world. That's crazy. And now they also have 2,811 stores across the world. And just, just think about that for a second. That is, that, is, that is fantastic considering that how they started so small, now they're so big. But what they also do is they also sell directly to the NCAA, 
the National Hockey League, the PGA Players, which is a professional golf association, and they also sell, send directly to the Olympic athletes. But now I'm going to be talking about Adidas's financials and their earnings. So in 2016, Adidas's revenue was 19.291 billion euros, which is 18% higher than it was in 2015. Adidas also predicts 11 to 12 percent increase in sales in 2017. Adidas's net income was around 59 percent higher than it, than in 2016 than it was in 2015. A big reason for this growth is because of the Summer, Olymp Summer Olympics in Brazil. So as of today, Adidas's stock price closed at 104.66, which is around 33.37 percent higher from year to date. The one-year target of Adidas stock price is 115.40, which would be a slower growth in 2017. But this is still a 10% growth in stock, which is a modest return for your investment. While Adidas has soared, Nike has slipped as Adidas has gained U.S. market share at Nike's expense. But going back to where Nike has fallen in the market while Adidas has risen. So this is a competition with sneakers. Now this shows the past two years. The, the growth of both companies. Look at Adidas, how ever since 2016 they have, in one year they have grown this much compared to Nike. And now that is very shocking, but it shows how much effort Adidas is putting in to try to better their company against other brands. So now I'm gonna be going into a big key part in a company. So I'm gonna be talking about marketing. So Adidas has uh, adopted a global and domestic market marketing strategy. Since the domestic strategy is sort of limited, they have based a lot of their time in the international market. So Adidas focuses on international events like FIFA, World Cup, tennis tournaments, basketball international competition, and the Olympic Games. So for example, Adidas has equipped 6,000 Olympic athletes from 33 countries. I don't think many other countries can say much about that. Adidas has a target audience of young children and with a passion to, to, uh, for sports and fitness. So the customer age is around 15 between 40 years old and, the, and um, who come from the middle and upper class. Adidas are focusing their marketing on six major cities, New York, Paris, Tokyo, Los Angeles, and London. Adidas is, is, has done something very smart, which is they're going away from TV advertisements and now they're using di digital advertisements since their audience is so young. And I have a really cool graph here that demonstrates on Instagram what the sneaker about sneakers. So if you see here, Instagram is a very popular uh, form of social media that many people use. So th this is the amount of likes that they have for per shoe. So here you have Nike and compared to Adidas, which is the big one, 23.8 million compared to 78.8 million. And the shoe that they are showing is, is called the Yeezy, and this shoe is so popular around the world. Many famous people use it, pro athletes wear it, you can see it everywhere. And, you know, this, this does represent in the market how Adidas is very smart because their audience is so young, so they have to find ways to reach their audience. And what I think they have done really smart and what interests me is going away from TV advertisements. You know... T Kids the, in this generation, we are always on our phones. You know, we're seeing we're we're not we, we're scrolling through TV, but we're constantly on our phones. So going to um, digital advertisements, I think, is a great idea because these younger kids want to look up to these to their role models, and I think that's a fantastic idea that Adidas has incorporated. Now I'm going to be talking about Adidas's social responsibility. So Adidas has an idea of being a sustainable business is about balancing shareholder expectation, the needs of their employees, workers in the supply chain, and the environment. Adidas believes in being fully committed to human rights will impact their economic success. Adidas believes as a, as a global company, throughout, through sports, they can change lives. 92% of people say a sport has a positive impact in their life. So much for watching my presentation on Adidas. I hope you learned something that can help you in the near future and possibly become a customer of Adidas. I can't wait to hear everyone's presentations and I can't wait to hear your guys' questions. This has been such a fun course. Thank you.